Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. This is video number 30, and this is the third and final law of thermodynamics. So, the previous videos to this, number 26, we discussed entropy, number 25, we discussed the second law, and number 2, we discussed the first law. So, I'd advise you to look at those, or at least have an understanding of them before you look at this particular video. So, the bottom line up front. What is the third law of thermodynamics? It says that at 0 Kelvin, or T is equal to 0, the entropy is 0, and so is the heat capacity at constant volume. Or, there are two different ways of saying it. There are equivalent ways of saying the third law of thermodynamics. So, where do we, where do we go from here? Right, okay, so we've seen in the past that the change in entropy is equal to the change in energy divided by T. Okay, and that's Q plus W over T. Now, if we say at the moment that there's no work being done or a constant volume, well then we can get rid of this, this term here. Right, and all my analysis will be for uh, no work. But I'll be, I'll be honest with you, it is valid for the case where work is being done as well, but I'm not going to look at that case today. So ds is equal to uh, q over t. Right, so where, where do we go from here, right? Well, we've seen in the past also that the heat capacity at constant volume is equal to dq dt. Okay, so if we put these two together, we can get the following relation, that ds is equal to c, c sub v dt over t. So now what we have is an expression to compute the change in entropy. So even if we haven't got the multiplicity value, we don't know the multiplicity function, so therefore we can't get the, the uh, mathematical function or the functional form for the entropy, we can still measure it by knowing the heat capacity and measuring the change in entropy as the temperature changes. Very straightforward. Okay, So we can measure entropy even if we don't have a proper um, equation for it. Well, you could say this is the equation, or this is the equation with which you can measure. Just to note, by the way, might be some, which what, what value of t do you use here? Well, you use the average value. So if you're going from vi to vf, well, then you use the average value of vi um, and vf. Okay, that's the values there. So that, if you're computing this in, in a discrete fashion, that's what you do. But of course, we I'm, I'm sure you can see where this is going. This is going to an integral at some stage. So let's. So if you want to get the the, the change in entropy going from um, two states, well, let's go ahead and do it. So that means that the integral from, we'll say, S1 to S2 ds, okay, is going to be equal to the integral from T2 to T1 and C sub V dt over T. All right? Now, sometimes the heat capacity can be taken out of the integral because it doesn't really change, and sometimes it does change. So, you know, I'm just going to try and leave this as general as possible. Now, if you look at this integral here, well, that's going to be s sub 2 minus s sub 1. Well, that's going to be equal to delta s. So, we can say now that the change in entropy is equal to this particular integral, delta s. That's the integral. So, if we're measuring it, if we want to measure the change in entropy in going from a certain value of temperature to another, well, then that's the equation that you apply. So, we now have a way, like I said, of measuring our change in entropy. Now, is that useful? Well, let's, it is useful because we can look at the change in the multiplicity. And we know that um, S is equal to K times the natural logarithm of the multiplicity. Or we know that the multiplicity is equal to E to the S over K. Or that the change in multiplicity is equal to E to the, uh, let's say, DS over K. Okay, so you can see where this is going. We're plugging this formula in here. So we're getting that the change in the multiplicity is equal to uh, e to the delta s over k. Now, why do I have t here? I'm just used to writing t at this stage, I suppose. And k. And if this guy writes, okay. Okay, that's what the change in, in the multiplicity is. And I'm just going to tell you that a small change in entropy is obviously going to be an absolutely enormous change in the multiplicity. 
So entropy absolutely is very important um, when it comes to your multiplicity function. It, it heavily influences what your multiplicity function does. So this brings us to the third law of thermodynamics. And you might say, well, how does it do that? Well, it does it as follows. We're after seeing that delta S, I'm going to do this in orange, I think. We've seen that delta S is equal to S final minus S initial. Okay, is equal to the integral from t initial to t final of c sub v dt over t. Now, what happens if I know the heat capacity the whole way down to zero Kelvin, or the whole way down to zero? But if I do that, well, I'm swapping in here zero, and in here zero, like that. So, what is the, the uh, how do we find out what the entropy at zero Kelvin is? Now, if you plug in zero here, you might think the integral is going to diverge, and I'll speak about that in a moment. So let's just remove this, okay, and just leave it, just leave it this way, times, we'll say x, another factor. And now let's say that x is independent of temperature, I can bring it out here. Let's just, just bear with me for a moment. Looking at the equation in this way, it implies that the entropy at t equals zero is zero. That's what this equation implies. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain why we could take this, this, uh, the, the other two factors out of the integral in a moment. So, that is the third law of thermodynamics. That the entropy at zero Kelvin is equal to zero. Well, what is the multiplicity? Well, we know that S is equal to K times the log of um, uh, the, the multiplicity. And if the entropy goes to, if the entropy goes to zero, well then the multiplicity goes to 1. Okay, So that means the system is in its ground state. It's got to its ground state, there's only one way of arranging the, 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 the system. Okay, So at 0 Kelvin the entropy is 0 and the multiplicity is 1 as a result. The multiplicity isn't its usual extraordinarily large number. So this is the third law of thermodynamics. Now the, the fact of the matter, or the truth of the matter is that in practice there are several reasons why this particular value here actually doesn't uh, isn't achieved. Why the entropy is not zero, and we say what we uh, the, what we actually say is that there is some residual entropy in the system. Now, what does that mean? It means really that in practice we don't get down to zero. Um, we don't we don't get down to zero joules per kelvin. Okay, we don't get down to zero entropy, and the reason is I'm just going to give you some some reasons for uh, residual entropy. In a solid, for example, you can have different crystal orientations. Just let's say up and down like this. You know, this is very basic. Now, it it is the case. It might be the case that you won't. You mightn't get them all facing in the same direction. Okay, they mightn't all get in the same direction. You know, some of them might be facing in in, in the other direction. Yeah, they might be facing in different directions. So for that reason, uh, they, like this would would have multiplicity of you know greater than one. I never actually got down to one, so if there is some residual entropy frozen into it. Okay, so it also if we think about mixing um, nuclear isotopes, okay, most elements have more than one stable isotope, but in let's say natural systems, these isotopes are mixed together randomly, and they also have an associated ent mixing entropy or entropy of mixing. So once again, at if we let t equal zero with nuclear isotopes, there should be a unique lowest energy state. Uh, which you know, which would give you uh, s equals zero, but in practice the atoms are always stuck in the random sites in the crystal lattice. Okay, so as a result we have some residual uh, residual entropy. And finally, just one more example. If you talk about nuclear spins, uh, I'm I'm just going to read this out from a reference that I have here. It says that uh, the third type of residual entropy comes from multiplicities of alignments of nuclear spins. At t is equal to zero. The entropy does disappear. Uh, the entropy does disappear as the spins align parallel or anti-parallel to their neighbors. But this generally doesn't happen until the temperature is less than a tiny fraction of one kelvin, far below the range of routine heat capacity measurements. So you know what we're trying to say really here is that we, we will never. You know, it's, it's highly unlikely we'll ever actually be able to measure zero. Um, zero. Okay. Um, right. Finally. Finally. I said here this this let's say this factor was c sub v over t. Now, in order for this integral not to diverge, this implies that c sub v also goes to zero as the temperature goes to zero. 
All right, that's the implication of this particular equation. So that means we have two different ways of saying the third law of thermodynamics. At zero Kelvin, the multiplicity is one, entropy is zero, or the heat capacity is also zero. So I'm going to in the next video I'm going to talk about uh, more a bit more about entropy. So I, I like it. It'll be an extension of this particular video. So I'm going to stop it there. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And if you're in a good mood, you might also click on an ad. Thank you.